Hi. Today I'd like to continue on the series that we began a few weeks ago, um, looking at the topic, Church for the Churchless. And we said before that here at Agape, our primary target uh, audience for ministry are those who are not yet in a saving relationship with God, not yet uh, part of a, a loving Christian community um, at this point. So we are looking at research that was done by uh, a famous Christian researcher, George, George Barna. And he thought, sought to look at the churchless community um, as we are seeking to look at uh, the churchless community, you, those who are not yet uh, in church. And we are seeking to understand and to ask, why are you not in church? So in this session, we are seeking to ask the question, why are you not in church? Why are you not a part of a Christian community? And what needs to happen in your life? What do you believe that you need to happen, that needs to happen um, in your life in order for you to make this important decision? Um, as a matter of fact, this is the most important decision, the decision to trust um, our Creator and His purpose for our lives as opposed to what we have chosen uh, for ourselves. This is the most important decision that we could ever make. So why are you not in church? Um, so we will start by looking at um, a, a story, a parable that Jesus told, uh, the parable of the, of, the, uh, of the banquet. And then we will just get right into our study. So we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 22. Uh, we're gonna read from about verse two to verse 14. Um, and this is the parable of the, the, the wedding banquet or the wedding feast. Um, and this parable essentially is a parable that tells of God's uh, relationship with, with us, uh, with humanity. Um, first of all, starting with his people, um, Israel, his chosen people, Israel, um, and them having rejected him um, he, of course, punished them um, for it because that was a great, you know, he, he is in fact king and he's in fact Lord and he's in fact their maker and they, they rejected and, and sought to do, you know, uh, their own thing and the consequences were grave. But notwithstanding their rejection, he then turned to invite the entire world. And so we look at it here, beginning at verse uh, 2, and we're reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads as follows, The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story um, of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Uh, when the banquet um, was ready, he sent his servant to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared, the bulls and the fatted cattle have been killed and everything is ready, come to the banquet. But the guests had, he had invited ignored them and went their own way, one on its, uh, to his farm, another to his business, and others seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. And when you see, you know, anyone in the Bible killing the prophets of God or the messengers of God, these are uh, usually references uh, to the killing of the prophets in the, in the Old Testament. Um, these who were sent by God to, you know, to, to, to warn his people and to guide his people and they, and they were killed. So this parable, of course, uh, to this point, is speaking to God's, uh, to God's people. The banquet was prepared for the Son of God um, in this parable, and of course, that's a reference to Jesus Christ. So verse 6 again, they, the other seized his messengers and insulted them and killed them. And the king was furious, and he sent out his army to destroy and to murder and to burn their town. So, you know, so that was a consequence for, for them um, rejecting his invitation, uh, uh, insulting the king himself, um, and of course, killing his servants. 
not, uh, uh, so after that, um, uh, verse eight says, and he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready and the guests I have invited aren't worthy of the honor. And now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So of course it is an honor to be invited by, by a king to be a part of his celebration. Um, he's providing, you know, a, a feast for, 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 for us and it is an honor. Um, but some rejected it. So he sent out into the street corners to everyone he, um, they, that they saw that they should invite. So of course, this invitation now is to the rest of the world. It is to all of us um, um, who were not initially a part of a, of a, particular, a, a particular race or a particular group of people. And verse 10 says, so the servants brought in everyone they could find good and bad alike and the banquet hall was filled with guests and this is important that there is no discrimination um, in this invitation um, not just by race or class you know some of us are 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 are, are, are bad um, other was are by this world standards are bad because uh, you know there really are no good persons for perfect persons um, you know, by God's standard, but by the world standard, there are good people and there are bad people. And God says, you know, invite them all. And so everyone is invited to the, to the banquet. And we're looking to ask the question um, of all of those who are invited, why are you, have you accepted this invitation and why have you not accepted? So continuing, uh, verse 11 says, but when the king came to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding feast. And clothes here, there are other references in the text that indicate what clothes are. They usually are referring to, referring to um, a relationship with God, uh, living for, for, for the Lord. Um, so if you are not uh, living for the Lord, if you're not serving God, if you're not um, in right relationship, you're, you don't have the proper clothes um to be in this wedding so the king saw this man without the proper clothes for the wedding and uh, verse it, uh, 12 says friend he asked how is it that you are here and without wedding clothes but the man had no reply um then the king said to his age bind his hands and feet and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth um and finally verse 14 for many are called but few are chosen and by this verse you realize that it was not just that one individual that did not have on um the right garment it is evident from this that many and the great majority of of those who were at the banquet that were invited to the banquet did not uh decide to actually live right they decide to not actually do the right thing and uh, commit their, their be, be a part of a committed relationship to God, not live according to His guidance, and so they were not uh, uh, they were not accepted um, in the banquet, and they were put out. So many are called, many of us are invited. The entire world is invited, um, but only a few have decided to actually um, do the right thing by the King. And so the question that we are asking, why are you not a part of a Christian community? So um, that's a summary of, of, again, of God's interaction with us in the world. First with his people, but now he's inviting all of us. And this is how the story is turning out. Um, so I'm going to give you the list um, of the top five reasons why persons are not in church as we ask the question, why are you not in church? And this study um, that George Barner has done, it is based on an American population. So we're looking at the percentage of those populations and the reasons why they give. And we're asking here at Agape, uh, Missional Christian Church Apostolic, why are you um, not in church here in Jamaica? Um, and uh, see if these uh, reasons resonate with you. See these re these reasons make sense. Are they are they okay or justified in some way? 
um, and we, you know, we can have that conversation uh, as we seek to make ourselves available to, um, to, to, to help you on that journey if you so desire uh, to do. Uh, starting from the bottom to the top, um, the top five reasons. So number five reason is simply that I don't believe in God or Jesus Christ. 10% of the American population say the reason why they're not in church is that they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Now, believing, of course, is the single criteria. If there's something that could be described as what should you do, what is the work of God, this is the work of God that you believe on him who, you know, uh, the Lord has sent. Um, and and interestingly, 75% of, the, of, of that population do say that they believe in God, um, but when asked, why are you not in church, 10% of them say the reason why I'm not in church is because I don't believe in God. Um, but here are a few uh, references in, 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 in the Word of God that confirms the significance of believing. John chapter 3, verse 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth uh, uh, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Um, John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath or the condemnation of God abides on him. And finally, Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be, shall be damned or shall be condemned. So, so this is a, 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 a very critical um, thing that the Lord has invited us to do. And 10% of the American people, population say, the reason why we're not in church, we just simply don't believe. Um, the, the number four reason, I'm not a Christian. 10% again of, the, of the, the respondents said, the reason why they're not in church is, I'm not a Christian. Um, and of course, being a Christian is critical again, um, because having believed on the Lord, you have to become, uh, you know, you have to be uh, enter into a committed relationship with God. John 3 verse 3 says, John 3 verse 3 says, uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in subsequent studies, we will look at, at all of these, uh, uh, you know, and try to uh, give you as much information as you need in order to convince yourself that, listen, you need to make this decision for your life. Um, Acts chapter 2 verse 38 as well on the reason why, you know, I, I'm not a Christian. Um, that's the reason for not being in church. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Peter here was talking to an audience of people who were convicted. They actually believed. Um, and the true belief, of course, is the starting point of your relationship with God and the most important thing. So having truly believed, um, that Jesus Christ is in fact their life, their, their salvation, their hope for everything that they dream of, then of course they just turn to him and they, they were obedient to his instruction. And his, instruction, and his instructions are that, you know, turn away from wrongdoing. Um, identify with me um, to this, uh, through this uh, Christian rite of water baptism. And of course, most significantly, you know, you need my spirit. I will give you my spirit and empower you to live for me. Um, but 10% of the American population, the reason why I'm not in church is that I'm not a Christian. Uh, um, the, the, the third reason why um, oh, oh, most people uh, in the American population are not in church, 11% of them say the reason why I'm not in church is I'm too busy um, or I have other obligations. And this is 
uh, heartrending, um, you know, to say the least, that, you know, the one who uh, died for humanity, the one who created humanity in the first place, and the one who knows the way to get us back uh, to the path that we were created to be on with so much uh, 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 trouble in the world, so much sorrow, so much heartache, so much disappointment, um, so much failure, um, so much condemnation. Um, the one who knows the answer we are too busy for. It, it would seem to, 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 based on this study, is that the case with you? Um, do you in fact believe, yes, that, you know, this God is um, the one who brought you here and is deserving of this, of your life? Um, all of these questions we will seek to answer in subsequent studies. But 11% said the reason why I'm not in church is that I'm too busy. Now, interestingly, in, in a parable that was told in the scripture, the parable of the sower, um, this is the parable of, um, of a man who was sowing seed and some fell at different places. Some fell on the wayside, some, some fell on the rocks, some fell on thorns, and some fell on good side. Now the ones that, the seed that fell on the thorns, uh, the Bible describes, um, and it says, uh, the, the, for those seeds that, are, uh, that fell on the thorns, such as hear the word, let, let me read the, the verse from the beginning, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful the word becomes it doesn't bear any fruit so you can't see any value in it you can't see any interest in it it doesn't make any sense to you because you have not really taken the time to actually hear the word and to listen to what it is saying and its implications for your for your life and its real world implications for your life uh, so too busy the number three reason the number two reason uh, heart rending again uh, no reason at all so 13% of the respondents say I don't really have a reason for not being a, a part of a Christian community I uh, don't really have a reason for being in a, you know, for not being in church, um, you know. So this speaks to the spirit of apathy and anything that we do in our lives that we are apathetic towards, you know. We, apath apathetic means to, to lack interest or enthusiasm or concern about something. And this spirit is actually condemned in, uh, in the word of God. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 12 says, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. In other words, the Lord is really neither doing, it, doing, doing anything at all, neither good or bad. So therefore, really, there is no interest. In There's no reason uh, to do anything. So 13% of the American population think that, you know, well, they just don't have a reason why they're not in church. And the number one reason why folks in the state say they are not in church is that they are simply not interested. They are simply not interested. It is boring. Um, and again, heartrending. How, how is it that the, the most significant thing that has occurred most significant event that has occurred you know the you know the death of jesus christ on a cross that that has changed the course of humanity from that time until now how significant is it that the one who made us and the psalmist said it is he who made us and not we ourselves the one who made us it, it, we are not interested in knowing who that person is being in a relationship with him and then understanding you know what our life ought to be about and pursuing pursuing our dreams and our hopes to so the only one who's able to make all things come true how is it that we're not interested in being a part of his uh, community a faithful community um, a Christian church so the number one reason it's not interesting and it's boring um, Paul wishes for the Hebrew Paul's wish for the Hebrew church, um, it, it describes Hebrew chapter 6 and verse 11, which says, 
our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. And verse, seven, uh, verse 12, then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. So if you are living in love, in love of others, you have an opportunity and a certainty. And of course, this love is in the context of, a, of the, the first and the second commandment, to love God with all our hearts and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we are pursuing this kind of lifestyle, right, this, there's a certainty of the things that we desire coming through um you know in this uh in this way so it's first verse 12 again then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent the amplified version says not grow in disinterested right instead you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit god's promises because of their faith and endurance um but nonetheless 15 percent of the american population are simply not interested or find that it's boring and so the question could be asked, what is your understanding of the, of the church? That you are willing to not be so busy with other things. So finally, I will just give you the list of the remaining uh, eight reasons why persons in the state say that they are not in church and see if any of these resonate with you as well. And in, in the process, of see um, if these reasons are adequate uh, reasons to not be a part of a Christian uh, a community. Number six on the list is uh, hypocrisy. There are many persons who feel that, uh, you know, this is probably the number one reason why a person is But it in, in fact, it, it, it is somewhere in the middle of the list, right? Number six, Christians are hypocrites and, uh, and are not genuine. So that's why I'm not in church. Is that a good enough reason? Number seven, I can worship, pray, practice faith from home. So some people believe that they can, in fact, this is in fact uh, the will of God and acceptable in the sight of God uh, and avoiding a Christian community is, is okay. Number eight, I am um, disillusioned with organized religion. So some of us um, recognize the challenges with many organized institutional religion and then believe that that is an adequate reason to not be a part of a Christian community. Um, number nine, I have different beliefs than they do. So I don't believe the things that Christians believe, which is quite similar to, um, you know, not believing, except that, of course, it's just, it's not just not believing in God or not believing that there is a God, but just not, but believing that there is another God somewhere. So those people are not in church for that reason. Number 10 is, you know, all churches want is my money. So some people have, you know, become injured by, you know, the, the prosperity gospel message that is um, all over all over the world, you know, and, uh, and the wrong that has taken place in many churches. Um, regarding, you know, um, money and financial stewardship. And so that's why they believe that that's a good enough reason to not be in church. Um, number, number 10, number 11 says, I haven't found one I like or I'm comfortable with. All right, um, number uh, 12, um, they're too controlling. The church is too controlling or, or judgmental. And, and there are Christian communities who are in fact judgmental and that is a spirit that we need to reflect on. But then is that a good enough reason to not be a part of a Christian community? And number 13 is I am limited by health issues. Some, so some for folks, uh, health is their reason. So I thank you for you know uh, um, being a part of this conversation. I'm looking, I look forward to, to feedback. Um, um, to the question, why, uh, why am I, or why are you not in church? Um, and we will, in subsequent studies, um, get into the text uh, to, to try to help with answers um, for how to deal with these reasons if you are indeed looking to, to get things right with God.